want to talk about dividend stocks. Uh, you talk about them in the past, uh, that they've got strong cash flows, that they are an area of the market you generally like. Do you like them in particular uh, in this current environment of a big sell-off? I like them a lot in this current environment. In fact, they're starting to outperform because at the end of the day, when you start thinking about uh, the success we had in technology for such a long run, they're the infinite long asset. Think they, they pay no dividends. They're trading at extremely high P's. They're not necessarily bad stocks, but they tend to really have violent corrections as they are right now. On the other hand, you take a really boring balance sheet like a Chevron or a Pfizer or an AT&T. Boring as hell, extremely strong cash flows, pay out a significant dividend yield, significantly higher than the S&P uh, SCC yield. So you can get almost 100 basis points more with these stocks. And they're the ones I tend to favor in times like this because they pay you to wait and you don't know when the bottom's going to be. In fact, that's on days like today, that's what I buy. Now, you know I love big indexes. I design my own. Today is an OUSA day. That's an index which is chock full of boring as hell, monster balance sheet, big succulent cash flow companies that tended to be out of favor for the last mm -hmm. couple of years. And all of a sudden, people love cash flow again. And so do I. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy every quarter uh, when I get that dividend. Kev Kevin, uh, I don't think I've ever seen you wear anything but all black. And you've got a, a red handkerchief there today. I don't know if that's uh, in honor of the red we're seeing across the screens. Uh, diving into to, to this point Will, a little bit more. I am more. so glad that you saw that, that you took notice of that, because I respect your look all the time. I'm trying to match this red band on this Daytona, which has a black element to it, to my suit. I'm so into this fashionista stuff these days. Help me, help oh. me. I will. I think, you know, not you shouldn't just launch an index, but uh, maybe a uh, O'Leary uh, fashion <laughs> brand. I think it would do very well. I'd, I'd be your first customer. Kevin, back to the, uh, the call on uh, yield stocks. In the way you're explaining it there, is it because it pays you whilst it waits, uh, but you do expect the prices to fall of these stocks along with everything else? Or is it because the companies no. that tend to have high yields have strong cash flows backing them up? No, it's all about the balance sheet and the quality of the balance sheet because what happens in the, with these stocks when you have violent corrections as we're having now. Remember, Wilf, it's been a long time since we started to have violent corrections. When you see stocks down 10% in one day or sectors down 3 and 4 and 5%, it's been years before we've really seen that and now we're starting to have it. And the reason I love stocks that have really strong balance sheets with strong cash flows and distributions to them is they tend to correct less. So on a mark-to-market -market basis, when I'm looking at my overall portfolio, these are the anchor positions. These are the ones that tend to help me outperform during periods of extreme volatility. They're boring, but they have their place in your portfolio. You know, when people say to me, oh, I'm never going to buy an old boring stock like a Chevron or a, or a Pfizer or a Roche, those are the ones that you love on days like today. And that's why they should always be there. You love on days like today when the market is falling, Kevin, but not when Treasury yields are rising. I mean, the big the big bond route, doesn't that make you nervous as a dividend holding holder of stocks that there's some real competition now against those stocks because you've got bond yields at multi-year highs? You're making an excellent point. And here's my comeback to that. Go back in history and look at periods when economic activity and low unemployment have forced the Fed to move and up rates. You do get a correction like we're having now, but then you go to the companies that are increasing cash flows and increasing their dividends during that period, like the boring ones I'm talking about, and they continue to perform even in a rising rate environment. The reason the rates are going up now is the Fed has no choice but to actually deal with the fact that we have extremely low unemployment, we've had really strong earnings, and the economy, particularly the small cap companies, that I invest in all over America, we're having our best year ever, ever. And we're, we're loving what's happening with policy, and yet we have to deal with the fact that the Fed is starting to raise rates. So no, I'm not in love with stocks that don't have enhanced cash flows or don't have the benefit of tax reform, but there's so many that do that I actually think we're gonna, end, we're gonna have a good year at the end of this year, and I'm still bullish for next year as well. Maybe not 21% earnings growth, but I think we could have a good, strong 6 to 8%, and there's nothing wrong with that, assuming policy stays the same.